Welcome to another customizing video. In this, I'm going to be covering Hydra Stomper here. I bought him, repainted him from almost head to toe, I think literally head to toe. And uh, I'm going to be going over the how and why and what of all of that. And there's going to be a little bit of story time in there as well. So let's get started. And first, I want to show you my desktop because I usually frame things specifically so that uh, anyone that watches my comic videos will be familiar with this desktop. But what you don't know is that Monday through Friday, this is also where I work from home. There's ordinarily a laptop sitting right here. And I frame things very specifically so that you don't see all of this. So I've got tools and paint and some toys back there and some more paint and pens and over here is some projects that are in progress and then there's some work stuff on top of there. But all of that is what I'm looking at on a daily basis while I'm working. And I I wanted a Hydra Stomper. I enjoyed the episode, uh, the, the first episode, the Agent Carter episode of What If that featured the Hydra Stomper. And pretty soon thereafter, Hasbro showed off the Hydra Stomper toy, which I was a big fan of, but I think it was 40 bucks or 45 I don't remember the price exactly, but I said that I would get it if it went on sale because I really wanted to repaint it. I didn't want it at that price, but I did want to repaint it. I felt like it was going to be a fun project. So it went on sale mid-December, somewhere just before Christmas, and I grabbed it. And then if you see in my Midnighter video, he was standing right over there for a couple of months. What I was waiting for, I was trying to figure out a paint. The intention was to make him look more metallic. And I've got these green paints. So one of my big things, and a friend pointed this out recently, is uh, as far as painting goes, my big thing is to add or remove shine. Uh, I want to take shine off of plastic that looks like fabric. I want to dull that down. And things that are supposed to be metallic, I want to bring up the shine. So. I've got these green paints. These are all metallic, and I tested these on two spoons. Uh, these have a note on here. Must be applied over black undercoat, and I think one of these is also a white undercoat. White undercoat. So I got my trusty spoons out, and I put all five on both a black spoon and a white spoon, and this is the only one I could still find. The black spoon is around here somewhere. But here are the five shades, and none of them were quite right. All, the same is true for the black spoon. So none of them were quite this drab green, and I'm sure this paint exists. Uh, I've seen enough painted model tanks to know somewhere this paint exists, but uh, I couldn't figure it out, and it wasn't one that I already had. I did paint in the process, this Warhammer arm. You can see it is dramatically darker. But I thought I had one that I could use and then it turned out so much darker that uh, I decided against it. So he was standing just off to my left for a few months and then one Saturday I needed to work. I got roped into working and uh, I say working, but it was really just sitting around waiting for people to get back to me so that I could send an email. It was. It was pretty dumb. But uh, I had a ton of time on my hands, and he was sitting right over there, and I just got started. Uh, I, I said, screw it, screw trying to wait for the right paint, and I grabbed my silver, and I started painting the rungs of the suit, rungs of the ladder, all of these rungs. So I did those in silver, and you might be saying, but now he's not so accurate. I don't care. Uh, I think he looks good. I also sanded down the star and this C15, so I just took a filing stick, one of these guys, and I just started sanding him. Uh, I knew that I wanted a distressed Hydra Stomper, so uh, these were extremely crisp, and I just filed those down a bit. The next thing I started doing while I was just sitting around that Saturday, I said, screw it, and I have this gloss varnish, and I said, if I can't find the right metallic paint, I'm just going to make him super shiny. 
and I started applying this by brush. It was very time consuming. It was fairly ridiculous, but I did have an abundance of time that day. So uh, I started with his legs and it was looking fine, but I also knew that that was going to take far longer than I wanted. I didn't want to cover every inch of him with a brush by hand just to make him shiny. And then I have to go over it again to distress him. So I started and ultimately stopped using this. The other thing that I was working on that first day was he has this annoying belt. And uh, so Berg and I reviewed this guy on the Shock and Odd Toy Reviews channel last year. This was his copy. And I talked more about me wanting one and uh, the annoyances of this belt that are always floating and it's never in a position where I want it to be. There is a bunch of plastic. So he's got all of this plastic underneath there and the belt is one continuous piece it goes down under the the torso connection point and then back up and it connects in all directions i cut all of that off and that's this pile of plastic here so i now have more control over the position of where this belt ultimately goes and it is still annoying but i can get it where i want it now because there's not plastic that's in my way but basically Ideally, I want it just over that waist piece, like that. And maybe I'll end up gluing it. I haven't decided yet, but it still floats up. It's still annoying. But I did cut all of that off day one as well. And once I started, this really moved from a project that I was just looking at while I was working to something that I was act actively working on. I went to the store. I was looking for some fake plants to... Um, be in the background of a new shadow box diorama that I'm doing and I ran a actually I don't have it in here hold on I'm gonna talk about something in a video it would make sense if that thing were in the room when I started recording so I was at the store looking for plants and I came across this stuff and I'm like hey I could just make the whole thing shiny at one go I have some of this rust-oleum in the flat version but uh, I really like these nozzles, and so far they haven't broken on me the way uh, the traditional spray can nozzle has on my black primer. So I used this, sprayed his whole body, and it did make him a tiny bit darker, which I didn't realize at the time, but I have some side-by-side -side videos or images that I will be putting up, and... Uh, you can see the color change. So it's maybe ultimately not the metallic finish that I wanted, but he is far shinier. He is less plastic looking than he was at the outset. So once he was totally coated with a gloss finish, I then got to work with my paint brushes. From there, I was using this six shooter paint this is a gunmetal finish. It's one of my favorites. And I apply that to his hips, um, ankles, knees, heels. I did these tank treads at the very end. I might still be working on these, a little bit of tiny detail here, um, and the shoulders. So I did, I did all of that because I wanted a bit of color breakup. I, I knew that. So the, the knees are well sculpted, sort of to look like inner workings. The hips are sort of the same way, and I figured uh, that would be the dirtiest part of him. It would be where, you know, all of the, the grind, the, the oil, whatever lubrication was going on, would be. And I wanted those, uh, not just for color breakup, but I, I assumed, you know, you, you put big plate coverings on the outside, but the, the inner workings are, are where it gets dirty. Um, I also did his collar and the antenna in black. Uh, again, some additional color breakup. This was, I mean, all of this guy was originally this, this drab green, and I'm just, uh, you know, in the, I'll say Vietnam movies, there's always the, the radio guy who's got the multi-foot antenna on his backpack, and it's always black, so I painted that black. And uh, the collar piece, I just also assumed would be more flexible, not metallic, probably. So I did that in black as well. Oh, I almost forgot. So I, I did in there as well. That's also gunmetal in there. 
both sides, obviously. From there, I gave him a black wash, um, just to get into some of the nooks and crannies of the suit, so you can see it here, here, there, along in here, and the knees as well. Um, I just wanted to, to up some of the grime. He is extremely clean in that episode, and I I wanted more of a... I actually wanted this. I need to get off a shelf as well. Hold on just a second. That can just stay there for a minute. So I wanted someone to go alongside these two, my captains, and I had dirtied up her boots a bit, and I had both dull coated and then dirtied up his pants as well. So I had two dirty captains and wanted a Hydra Stomper to go along with them. And now all I need is World War II Logan. And I think these, this set will be done. But, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a great companion piece, the, the three of them together. And Hasbro, you know you want to make another Wolverine. Just give me a World War II Logan and I will buy it from you. So with that, the final step was to, I went back to silver and I brushed, brushed along every, every surface, every edge, this, this silver. Every surface. It took maybe two weeks total, I think from when I started to when I stopped. It took maybe two weeks total from when I started to when I, when it was finally done. And it was mostly uh, I would paint a little bit while watching TV with my wife. So uh, not a dedicated two weeks of work. The back looks very clean. This is just a smooth surface and I want to do a side by side. I was talking about the color difference earlier. So a lot of work there. But I was talking about the color difference earlier. I didn't touch this piece. So as a side by side, you can see this makes it look closer on camera than it is in person. But as I said, I'm, I've got some side by side pictures with Berg's copy. I will put those up as well. I wanted an untouched piece just to show the, the before and after, but I do have plans for this as well. Uh, I'm going to paint these hoses gray. I'm going to do the same gloss coat on this. And then I think probably gunmetal for some of these hinges. And uh, I want to paint one of these panels completely silver because it, uh, in my head, is a replacement for the original. So one of these is going to be a different color. And uh, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yet. But these will get painted. And uh, then he will have his backpack as well. But this is completely untouched. And this is the result of my painting. One thing I do want to mention before I get out of here is um, always test your paints. So I took one of the hands originally before I sprayed the whole thing with top coat. Uh, I took one of the hands and I sprayed this initially just to see what the end result was going to look like. And I liked the end result. So then I did his whole body. But Please test your paints before you experiment on uh, your ever more expensive toys. Even though that I'm done with this figure, there is still a few things that I'm going to be doing, namely this and possibly finishing off those tank treads, but he's done enough that I thought I would shoot a video. I'm not sure what I'm doing next. I do have a couple of works in progress already, and I did just this week bring home Wilson's Swamp Thing from the Shock and Awe Studio. I sprayed that yesterday. I'm going to start painting. I expect that's going to take a long time because there is a ton of sculpted detail in there and all of it is, uh, I mean, it's vegetation, so all of it's going to be a little bit different. Um, I will do a video. I'm, I shouldn't promise this, but I intend to do a video when I'm done with the Swamp Thing and some of these other projects as well. This, this whole pile of stuff over here. But that's been it for this we have customization videos going up on a pretty regular basis dan more so than myself but uh if you like this please subscribe 
we have plenty more of this content and him and I are both working on additional things. It's just uh, finishing it and then sh it's really just finishing and then shooting a video for it. So really, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, I'm... People have praised me for this and I do think it looks good. However, I've seen the work of other people just uh, blow me out of the water. So if anyone is a better painter than I am, please drop a comment below if you have any tips. Um, or if you want tips, I can tell you what I know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. If you like this video, please subscribe. As I said, we have more customization videos coming on a regular basis. Painted customizations and more significant customization videos. So if you like this, again, please subscribe, drop a comment below, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.